So then moving on, the next matchup, the big surprise of the night. And what was great about this was nobody seemed to know what was going on. Commentary teams like, well, next up we've got, you know, LIJ teaming up to take on, you know, you know, eight man team tag team action. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, Zack Sabre Jr.'s music hits. He's come down. He's wearing the you know, all white jacket. He's wearing, you know, like white, um, like MMA type shorts. And you're like, oh, what, what's Sabre coming out? Maybe he's going to cut a promo. There's going to be some kind of angle here. He walks out and then all of a sudden you hear, Da-da-da-da. yeah. <laughs> Shibata's music hits. The crowd forgets you're not supposed to make noise. They gasp. But they're going crazy. Out comes Shibata. He's wearing gear also. And, you know, the ring announcers announced, you know, a five-minute uh, UWF rules exhibition match between Zack Sabre Jr. and Katsuyori Shibata. Yeah, this even um, – now, I was spoiled on this by the time I got around to actually watching it. Um, and we'll talk about the main – there were things that occurred on the show that made me not feel necessarily that I needed to go out of my way to catch the show <laughs> in the immediate fashion that I normally would for a G1 final. But um, it actually took me like a day or two before I even knew that this happened. Like, I saw a picture. I saw like a, a meme and it was like, you know, guys only want one thing and it's it's fucking disgusting. And then like, and then the, below it says the thing guys want. And it's like a picture of like Shibata and uh, Zach and, you know, they're in some sort of like octopus hold, like towards the tail end. But I didn't know who was in it. And I was like, I was like, who is this? And people had to be like, uh, Shibata and, and Zach. And I was like, is this from like the match they had with Zach <laughs> the company? And then I had to find out like, oh no, Shibata wrestled the other night. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, I, I woke up and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to throw it on the G1. And, you know, I'll watch the final live. And I start New Japan. We're on Saber and Shibata are grappling. I was like, what the heck? I'm like, Shibata, <laughs> Shibata is wrestling? What is happening right now? Oh, man. Yeah, you know, say what you will about, you know, the many different, like, issues that might be ongoing in the company. One thing that we've complained about in years past, especially the past couple of years, are the lack of surprises and big moments on these G1 final nights where you used to have stuff that was shocking and surprising, big matches that meant something and maybe this isn't quite all those things but in a certain sense it was better because it was emotional you know and it came from out of nowhere and it was like what are we getting here <laughs> we're getting Shibata and Zack Sabre and like you know I know I know a lot of people wanted Zack to win this you know to be in the finals on this night and I but again we we went over that last week and discussed just how strongly they presented him but again wow what an incredible way to present this guy than having him be the first opponent for whatever this return of Shibata is or isn't, whatever it may end up being. The fact that they chose him and selected him to be that guy, that puts a lot of eyes on Zack Sabre, a lot of eyes on the promotion. It's an exciting thing. It's something that people have been wanting and waiting for. And, you know, it, all, it also kind of makes a lot of sense why Zack has been talking so much shit against Shibata and and everything like that like all year long basically right and we we've even complained been like why are they doing this if these guys can't even wrestle you know right we've even seen guys like who are feuding with the la dojo like osprey and them or like mentioning right. shibata and you know trying to start uh, a feud pretty much with shibata um uh, and so yeah this was just very interesting but what we know like um you know this was pretty much a surprise from everybody like it was like gato shibata saber in the ring announcers knew nobody else knew. So it was generating a surprise from Kevin Kelly and Charlton and everybody else. And, uh, you know, even the boys. Yeah. No, none of the guys knew, um, Shibata, he's been lobbying for a ring return for a long time. Now, you know, when he first came back that first appearance, you know, he said, I'm still alive and took a bump in the middle of the ring. And since then, you know, he's been training at the LA dojo and training these guys. And for years now, I've been lobbying for a return. And, you know, obviously he has to get cleared by doctors, but it seems, you know, we've seen with guys like Brian Danielson and, and Edge, these guys who have brain injuries or neck injuries who take several years off, they're, they're able to come back and get cleared. And this could be a similar situation here for Shibata. And I think this grappling match here was the first step in the right direction. Well, that may or may not be. You know, I've historically been on the side 
that was extremely skeptical of the prospect of a return for Katsuhiro Shibata. And I felt as though when we saw him get involved physically with Kenta a couple years ago after the G1 and that how that whole story unfolded between Kenta and it ended up basically being Goto as a proxy for Shibata. That was a big indication to me that he most likely was not cleared. And, you know, while he did look fantastic in the ring, you know, I pointed out to our listeners at the time just how serious the type of brain injury was that he suffered in that match with Okada. Um, You know, now we're years on later, and they've continued to periodically tease him with people making comments. And it started to kind of sway me in the direction of thinking like, well, they wouldn't keep doing that if they weren't on some level hopeful that he might be returning. Um, and maybe this is the first key or indication that that's the case. Uh, I will say, though, that the rules of this match tend to maybe serve as a buffer just in case that's not the case. Like, he might not be cleared. I mean, they didn't strike. They didn't, you know, not that... Uh, the either of these two guys' matches are really filled with this stuff, but, you know, they didn't do a lot of, like, rope running. They didn't come off the turnbuckle. They didn't brawl on the outside. They didn't use weapons. None of that stuff. It, you know, it was as it was built, an exhibition match, and it was classic technical wrestling, which uh, is fine, but it's also safer, you know? And yeah. so there, there's a part of me that's wondering, like, did they do that because he, he can't be cleared, but they wanted to throw both of these guys' bone, and it's a one-off? And, you know, it, cert- it helps the company, too, because now everyone's excited. But they haven't promised more than they delivered. In fact, they over-delivered just by doing it in the first place. Right. You know? Yeah. But, no. the, but there's another part of me that is like everyone else and is hoping that this is the first side of things to come. And if that's the case and he is cleared, that would be incredible. Yeah, from my understanding, I don't think he's officially cleared yet. But they're 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 hopeful and there's signs that he could be cleared and um, you know post match after the match I'll see it was a five minute draw after the match he says the next time that you see me I'll be in my wrestling gear um, so clearly he's dead set on on making a return and having this comeback so it, it makes it sound like he, the, him being cleared is maybe sooner than we think that's true and uh, again I don't want to throw water on the fire but. He's said things like this in the past, which just shows that he's always intended to come back. And I think we've always known that on some level. It's not like it's been a secret. Uh, The real question is, can he get the clearance? Would it be safe? And if he did come back, what, what would we be getting? Now, if this was any indication, he seemed to be every bit as good as he ever was. I know it wasn't necessarily like the hard hitting, violent style of Shibata that we've come to know. But in terms of intensity and purposeful, you know, ring work, uh, it was just beautiful. And I mean, it was it was kind of really emotional in a certain sense. But I gotta imagine that if he were to come back, he's not coming back as like a, a an altered version of Shibata. He's probably coming back whole hog, like <laughs> fucking knees, elbows, you know, the one legged drop kick, you know the corner drop kick, you know, all right. that shit. Sleeper, PK kick, all that, yeah. Everything, yeah. Yes. Headbutts but... probably too. I bet he would do headbutts too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if he was smart, he would alter them for safety's purpose and <laughs> split his dome open to right. get that line of blood that he's used to getting, but uh, yes. Yeah, you gotta wonder too, like, what has he been doing in the LA Dojo? Like, has he already been taking bumps? Has he been, you know, wrestling with those guys, you know, Fredericks and Connors and Coglin? Has he been doing little mini matches with those guys? We don't know. He could probably have could be doing this this whole time. I'm positive that he's on some level wrestling in the gym. Um, you know, most trainers do, but uh, there's wrestling and then there's wrestling. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean getting in there and taking some bumps and, and doing some sequences and some spots is not quite the same thing as wrestling. Right. <laughs> if, if that makes sense. I, maybe it doesn't, but it's... It, no, I, yeah, I definitely understand, yeah. 